And welcome once again to episode 28. This is the We Are One, You Are Two podcast network. I'm calling it now, Matt. Ooh. I'm your host, Robert Fanzo, joined once again by Matt Rhodes. And Matt, uh, we've got a great show lined up for people today. We have Alexandra Misha from yeah. Mindwalker Games. is going to be joining us shortly uh, in what I'd like to pretend is going to be our new spinoff podcast in the future called uh, Inside the Industry interview where I cubed it as I thought about it at 2 a.m. one night. Um, you know, we're super excited about that. We're going to join her here very shortly. Uh, I did want to mention a few things before she joins us, though, uh, Matt, and that is that uh, we are migrating from SoundCloud. Ooh. So you may find us on, we'll still put stuff on SoundCloud, but our main host is going to be Podbean. Shout out to those guys. They've been awesome. Uh, we're going to do Podbean from now on. Uh, we have an actual little Podbean site as well, uh, where you can find all of the archives of all of our past podcasts. Uh, we also have a Podbean Patreon, so sort of similar to Patreon, uh, but it's also, it's the same, basically the same thing, truthfully, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's one of those things where we can go ahead and, um, you know, if you want to, if you're listening to us in the Podbean app, which you can download on your Android phone, on your uh iPhone as well, because I just did it this afternoon. Uh, and you like what you hear, and you want to give us a dollar, two dollars towards helping us separate these two podcasts out and make them two separate entities. Uh, we need probably a second audio guy for that, and we're going to have to start paying somebody at some point. Um, but if you want to help us out with that, uh, you can donate a dollar per month. You can donate two dollars per month, five dollars per month, and you get rewards with it too. And so head over to either patreon.com slash we are one you are two or head over to our Podbean. And you'll see that our Podbean has a Patreon as well. The goals and the rewards are the same on both platforms. It's just a preference of where would you like to subscribe to us and, and get those rewards. I'm going to keep the rewards the same on both. Uh, so I wanted to mention that to everybody. Uh, if you like what you hear, you can go to iTunes, Stitcher. We're going to be on Spotify soon. By the time this comes up, probably we'll be on Spotify as well. Fingers crossed. Uh, so you can... Find us on most podcasting platforms, but Podbean will be the top one as well. You can also find us on Anchor FM, too. So, Matt, we're, we're going to be a lot of places. Ooh, that's what I like. Yeah. Spreading it out. Yeah, we're pretty much, yeah, pretty much going to be everywhere we can put our hands in. That's right. Um, and so I just want to make sure I mention that to everyone. Beyond that, Matt, uh, what have you been playing? Oh, come on, Rob. Everyone knows what I've been playing. Rocket, Rocket League. League. <laughs> yeah, I heard you're no longer a champ. Now you're just oh, a chump. Oh, I am. I am a super chump. Super Diamond 3 chump. Gross. Um, <laughs> <laughs> still struggling, you know what I mean? Still struggling to get it back. But that's okay. I mean, I had it for a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm still of proud course. of myself. I was super excited that day. I was I was literally aghast at like it happening. I was just like, "This is crazy! I can't believe this is up." But you know, I'll get it back. I'll get it. Uh, but I'm playing it now because I got that birthday celebration going on. Man, they got the third happy birthday Rocket happy League. Happy birthday Rocket League! Third anniversary, tenth anniversary. If you call, uh, if you count, uh, what is it? Supersonic, the uh, rocket, rocket powered rocket battle powered cars, right? Something like acrobatic. That. Yeah, I forgot a, a thing or two in there, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm just grabbing those balloons to get uh, those uh, extra items, which is kind of cool. Cool. They have like, two cool sets of wheels, um, one of which is like their psionic symbol with like a little elect electricity coming out of it. Uh, and then they have these, they have 10 golden eggs, which are basically just free crates items. So I don't think there's anything specifically in the golden eggs, right? It's just like a random drop. You get it like a random item. So it could be anything from like a rare decal to, I think, as high as like a black market item. And those are just all free. And I believe still tradable. So just kind of plug away at that and try to get myself some 
get myself some uh, golden eggs. But uh, other than that, I've really been playing that much. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, nah, that's been pretty much it. I focused the past few days. Oh, I've okay. been working so much that it's been kind of hard to do anything Absurd. else. But you know, it's nice to just be able to jump into a game or two, and you know, for a half hour and just kind of relax, and then you know, go back to bed because I have to be at work. <laughs> I understand that. That's that's why I've been playing so much. I mean, I've got World Cup fever right now, uh, and so nice. I've been playing a ton of FIFA 18 uh, with the World Cup update, I guess. Yeah. And then I've been playing a ton of Neo as well because I'm just obsessed with getting my butt kicked by games like Neo. <laughs> but I also, I also went through and, and I tweeted this out and I put it on Instagram. I made a list of my backlog and I've got like 35 games. And so I think I might step away from Neo for a little bit um, and tackle some smaller ones. Like I'm going to finish Celeste, I decided. I'm sorry, 35 um, games? I didn't count, but I'm pretty sure it's around 35. That's insane, man. I've got ones. I mean, okay, now some of are PS Plus free ones like Absolver. I want to try that out. Sure. You know, and uh, there's Trackmania Turbo from two months ago that I wanted to try out as well. But then I've got ones like, um, oh, I totally drew a blank on it. And I feel so bad right now. Uh, it's published by Devolver Digital. Um, Crossing Souls, I think it's called, or hmm. it's something like that. Um, I feel really bad because I really, really was digging the style too. But um, I've got several games on the back burner that I'm just going to, even if I just dip into them a little bit and try them out uh, so that I don't feel bad uh, that they've <laughs> been untouched. So uh, I'm going to go on like this crazy like um, buffet gaming Ooh, spree. A gaming buffet. Sounds delightful. A gaming buffet where I, I play a bunch of games and finish nothing. Kind of like Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the truth. But I mean, that's, that's yeah, well, that, yeah, I know. But that's because you play with Rocket League so much. Yeah, I um, mean, I, but I still need to finish God of War and Far Cry 5 and, you know. Far Cry 5 is another one. Yeah, I need to dip more into that. Pyre is another one. And there's a few smaller indie games. I actually still want to continue playing the demo of Skell Attack. I just love that. And we're going to have those guys on the podcast in a, in a couple of weeks. And I'm just super excited to talk to them about that game because that's a that's a full game purchase for me when it comes out. Cool. All right. So there's something we haven't had in a while. Matt's Ambulance. Oh, yes. It's bringing it's it back. back. I'm so glad we did this intro. We were, we were contemplating whether we should do this intro. And I'm glad that we did because there it is in the background. The sirens, they're going off. If you don't know what that is, you need to go back about probably about 10 to 15, 10 to 15 episodes at this point, because uh, well, it's been a while. It's been, well, I don't know about 10 to 15, but, I mean, it's been a while that we've noticed for sure, uh, but it was on a consistent basis. So, um, it's nice to see that it's back, and I feel yeah. like that's a good luck symbol for this episode. I feel like, it you know, is. I mean, we already did the interview, but, Shh, and it is an You're letting them behind the curtain, oh, don't Oh my gosh, that. we didn't do it yet. It's about to come up. I'm so sorry. Dave, cut All that right, out, guys. But don't cut it so, out. Don't cut it out. <laughs> uh, so we're going to join Alexandria now in our yeah. podcast interview. And she's going to come by and talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we've got uh, Alexandria Misha from Mindwalker Games joining us. So Alexandria, welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you here. We're excited to talk to you. I guess what we always like to do to kind of get things kicked off and get started, uh, we like to get to know our devs a little bit. So if you could tell us maybe just a little bit about yourself, yeah. a little bit about your, your background, um, you know, where you currently are professionally, how long you've been there, and uh, what maybe you even did if you wanted to talk about that at all before you got into game development. Uh, sure. Uh, game development is something that I kind of accidentally fell into uh, four, or almost five years ago now. Um, I went to San Diego Comic-Con. And I ran into uh, Rob Elam. So, yes, yeah, same same first name as you. And uh, he Perfect. was working on developing a tower defense first-person shooter hybrid. Now, I'd always been interested in video games. I mean, I, I'm, my aim is not perhaps the greatest in the world, so I'm not great <laughs> at gaming, but I've, I've always enjoyed it. And um, at the time, I was taking care of my aunt, so I was uh, she had cancer. Uh, so I was home a lot of the time and Rob just needed some help because he, he was originally developing the game completely alone and he just needed some help with a few things here and there. And he also needed an English narrator. Now I can do an English accent as a politrick. So, and I just done it just for fun for him once. So he's like, well, 
do you want to voice, do you want to voice the narrator in the game? I'm like, sure. So, <laughs> cause voice acting has, I watched a lot of Monty Python as a kid. So I've always just kind of loved doing accents and that that's been my thing. So I, uh, started voicing a character in the game and then I ended up voicing two and then he just needed help here and there. And I just picked up more, picked up more and well, now I'm here. <laughs> Wow. Um, so he, he does, I, I'm still, uh, not very proficient programming at all, but I can use unity. I do the videos. I do the audio editing. Um, basically any promo for anything we've done was most likely me. So, you know, he makes the game and I, I do everything else. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. So literally just a chance encounter at a, at a comic con. He was dressed up as Malcolm Reynolds and I really like Firefly. <laughs> All right. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I ended up making a lot of friends at that con. It's just, it, and I'm going to be going again in a week. It's just, it's a great place to meet people. That's awesome. Uh, that's, yeah. well, I mean, that's a great way to kind of get into it. Now, uh, what were you doing, if you don't mind me asking, what were you doing before? Because you said you fell into game development, obviously. So what did you do uh, before that or or even currently doing? Because I know you mentioned you had a, a job that you worked to me Well, on right now I'm basically working two day jobs to make ends meet while we try to make this game lucrative. Um, wow. I'm, working at, I'm working at a little retail store and I'm also working at a, a little factory that makes game organizers. So you see, I'm sticking, it's the board game side of things. <laughs> um, so I'm juggling two day jobs and I come home and work on the game and basically every second of spare time I have. Wow. Uh, honestly, that's basically been it. When I was, when I was, when I was younger, I didn't really have a passion at that point. I was just kind of floating, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I knew I liked boy, voice acting and I knew I liked video games. And then, well, an opportunity fell on my lap. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'll do this then. So I've just been meeting people and networking. And I just, I love the indie dev community. It's been so amazingly welcoming. And I, I'm thrilled to be working with this, honestly. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I know uh, that's one thing that I've really come to appreciate that since we started this podcast and uh, since we started our first uh, kind of indie interview, and we've kind of been on a roll with them is just how welcoming the community is and how many people are so awesome in it as well. Um, and really just, in my opinion, the lifeblood of uh, the future of the industry as well, because they the, tend to be the most creative ones and the ones willing to take the most creative risks. Exactly. I mean, it's... It's been really fun, especially on Twitter. I've been building a little, we started a Twitter account, I think a year and a half ago. And it's really fun to watch other indie devs like um, Relentless Rex just had their Kickstarter funded. And it was really fun to watch them do really well. Escape Dude Lands and Skeletak, Attack. And it's just like, it's just such a community. And yeah. it's nice to watch others succeed. And it's been really fun. Absolutely. So now you say that you're not too great at games, but what are there any games that you like really enjoy that you're like... I'm not good at aiming. My aim sucks. <laughs> I was trying to be polite. It's No, my aim is terrible. <laughs> I, I play a lot of Overwatch. I okay. am usually the healer. I'm, I, my, <laughs> my mouse sensitivity is to a ridiculous degree and I just float around as mercy. But I also play Mean Junkrat. I played a lot of Orcs Must Die. I don't want okay. to acknowledge how much time I put in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Lots. <laughs> you know, I just kind of enjoyed it. Was my it was my escape basically? Because, like I said, I was taking care of my aunt uh, for several years, and she had cancer. It was very difficult. And when she was asleep, I would just kind of run away to my little hiding place and just play video games all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice to have that like, escape and kind of like be able to kind of escape to a different little world and enjoy yourself for a little bit, right? Oh, and Rocket League. Lots oh, of Rocket yes. League. I went on a huge yeah. binge of that one for a while. Oh, Matt, God. Matt's, Matt's still on that binge three years later. I can't get him off of it. It's terrible. <laughs> I just can't stop playing it. It's, oh, gosh. It's just it's so, the reason I it's have so a backlog. much fun slash frustrating slash annoying. Yep. But, yeah, it's just like a labor of love. I just really enjoy it. Yeah, I never expected to be an indie developer. So, honestly, I'm just psyched that I have, like, this opportunity. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. I play video games and now I'm making video games. It's awesome. <laughs> I think, I think everybody that's ever played a game has probably considered that at some point, I think, but uh, to be able to do it is another, no, totally another realm and uh, an exciting opportunity. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit, actually, since, you know, you've, you kind of fell into this and you mentioned that uh, he was working on a game at the time. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the games that you guys are working on? Cause you've got two, you've got one that uh, has been on steam for a while now. Yes. Uh, in, in access. And then you have another 
uh, as well that you guys have been working on for VR too. Uh huh. So honestly, with Sentinels, um, if if we had a chance to go back and redo it, we would have waited to release. But as it was, I wasn't as involved at that point because I was still um, very entrenched in Family Matters at that point, and uh, we basically just released it into early access to try to get feedback because we just. Um, this is my particular crusade. Like, this is something that I really want to do. I really don't like the my way or the highway developers. We're just like, this is what you get. And if you don't like it too bad, I personally abhor that mentality. And with Sentinels and also with Onslaught VR, I want to do the opposite of that. So it's like, people can hit me up wherever and I will literally message Rob and be like, hey, so just got this feedback. What can we do about it? And I, I want to be even if, you know, hopefully when the game gets big and even when things are, are more, uh, you know, we get more feedback than we do right now, I'm always want to keep that, you know, I just want to always be community driven and hear what people actually want and make it fun for them as opposed to just some crusade that we decided we want to do. So that, that's just my personal philosophy, I guess, but I can actually tell you about the game. Um, <laughs> Sen- uh, Sentinels is a tower defense first person shooter hybrid, and it has gone through many iterations. And in the last couple of months, I'm really feeling good where it is. So what we did is we added in first person, um, first person view only enemies. So strike forces and enemy supports and marauders and marauders are these awful little runners that run around and stun your towers your towers don't shoot them. So you have to go and take them down. You can have the best tower defense setup ever and they will still just stun everything. Now the game has a lot for you to do and you also have to have a really good defensive web. Otherwise you're screwed because when the strike forces come in, you have to give them your full attention. Otherwise they're going to stun all your towers and you'll be even more sunk. So I feel like with Sentinels, we finally got a really good groove where it balances tower defense and first person shooter nicely. Basically what Sentinels needs is a healthy dose of polish and that I will feel really good with where that game is. So it's still in early access and I don't have an ETA. Uh, I'm hoping fairly soon, but mm-hmm. for now, our, for now it is really fun. I, I now feel very confident in where Sentinels is. So if people, people buy it, I'm like, yay, have fun with it. Please let us know what you think. Uh, Onslaught is still very much in development we're sort of learning from our first experience with releasing Sentinels and we're doing things differently. And um, Onslaught was originally going to be a sort of arcade style shooter. Because one thing I forgot to mention with Sentinels is we introduced this thing called the mobile gun platform. Yes, we should probably have a better name, but we don't. Um, <laughs> basically where you can headbutt enemies. You press space bar, then you go shooting um, out and then you can just blast enemies out of your way. Uh, the mobile gun platform honestly revolutionized sentinels and i i feel like that's what made that game really fun but that movement is so amazing in onslaught because it feels like you're flying and so what he's actually working on right now is introducing melee attacks so you basically punch the enemies and just it in vr it feels pretty cool and there's also going to be grappling mechanics and we're working on um, having the enemies be more engaging and actually attack you so you have to get them off you or you, t- you, you know, you take damage. So it was originally going to be a pretty, you know, it was going to be an arcade style shooter with some cool movement abilities, but it's really evolving. And I'm, I'm excited in the direction it's going actually. Yeah, it sounds, I mean, it sounds really awesome. And what I love about, um, I think both games is the art style that, uh, you guys decided to use too. You know, it's a little bit of that, like, uh, cell shaded, yes. I guess would be the best way I would describe it. I mean, I just, I love that look. Um, and I know Sentinels has a lot more of that, I think than Onslaught does from um, what I've kind of been able to tell. Uh, but I, I do love that art style. And, and uh, there's something about that aesthetic, too, uh, that really pulls you into a game, uh, let alone, you know, it being in VR, which is a huge uh, or a massively different experience, like you were saying. Uh, especially, you said you guys were going to have grappling hooks and things yes. like that, correct? Um, and so I can only imagine what that's going to be like uh, in a VR game because... Uh, I know <laughs> I don't do well with motion sickness in VR, yeah. but uh, oh, then you might want to use our teleport ability so you don't get motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I played a little bit of Star Blood Arena, and, and that you know, doing a barrel roll and that was enough for me. But <laughs> um, yeah, it, it looks they both look amazing, and and I love the way that you guys have taken and 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 combined two elements with the the tower defense and then the first person 
uh, experience as well. I think that's something that's really unique. I, I got to say, I'm really happy to hear you like the art style because I, I did the, the graphics for that and I had no idea what I was doing. There was a lot of YouTube tutorials, so many YouTube tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked really hard on that. I got to say, you uh, <laughs> for somebody to know what they were doing, you did a, a great job. Um, Thank you. Know, you. It, it looks, like I said, it looks fantastic. It reminds me very much of um, like Fear Effects Sednas uh, or... Um, Borderlands. Borderlands that, is what I was going for. Yeah. Um, and I, that's just an art style I love, like Tales from the Borderlands, uh, any it of the Borderlands so games. so cool. It does. So we're, we're definitely yeah. going to be increasing that too. Like hopefully once things get rolling, we have a little uh, more <laughs> stability financially. Um, we're really going to, that's the polish that I'm looking forward to add to Sentinels because I, I know that we can just make it look really good and really engaging and now i feel like the core mechanics are actually there so i'm psyched to have the opportunity to take a step back and just polish everything and make it look awesome yeah absolutely what would you say has been the biggest challenge for you guys so far on on either project exposure exposure absolutely exposure i mean ra's been making games for 20 some odd years he's been doing this for a long time um and like i said i have not i really have no formal training other than being a gamer previously so, and he, he doesn't really have any hand in the PR because he's busy, well, making the game. So it's just a learning on the fly type situation. And I've seen firsthand just multiple projects just struggle to get exposure. And we're in the same boat. It's like, it's, we're like a drop in the ocean. And we have to make that drop look really, really cool and hope that a fish sees it. It's like, oh, this is awesome. We just need a big fish. And it's, it's kind of interesting in a way because I like the fact that I have to get really creative. Like I have to figure out, okay, so what hasn't been done? Okay. Everything's been done. So what can I do to make this stand out somehow? And I like that aspect, but it's by far been the most difficult thing. I mean, I'm really happy with how Sentinels is and I think Onslaught will do really well, but financially, (laughs) we're just not really on the map yet. So I'm hoping that will change in the hopefully near future. Uh, you said you had to think of like creative ways to kind of expose the games. So what, what would you what would you say is like the most creative way that you've come up with to like get people to the game? Honestly, probably the the biggest thing that I've done is just write corny stuff in my press emails. I mean, it's just I've gotten responses <laughs> back. Like I sent out. I don't know, hundreds, probably hundreds upon hundreds of emails that were just like what you're supposed to do, right? You know, right. professional. Here's my trailer. Here's this. We're amazing. Please message us. No, I never heard back. So then I figured I'm just going to be corny because that's me and <laughs> just be upfront about the fact that, yes, this is early access. Therefore, there will be bugs. We might patch that out with the game's release. You know, it's just like silly things. <laughs> and yeah. um I got a few responses back That's and we got some curators from that. So it's all been still small scale, but overall I've learned that if I'm just more me and less uh, what I'm quote unquote supposed to be professionally, I've gotten more response. So I'm just trying to not hold myself back and not worry too much. Also just be fearless and message everyone because the worst that I will get is either a no, stop bothering me or they just won't answer me. So I'm just going to keep trying basically that it's just, Lots of emails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Throw it at the wall, see what sticks, right? Uh-huh. Worst people could say is no. Yeah. yeah, that was a really long, drawn out way of saying that. <laughs> no, no that's, no, that's a good, I mean, that's a good strategy. I mean, you got to just keep pushing for yourself. You know, you want to push your product. You want to push the game and in any way you can. So, I mean, it's a good thing that you're, you have that drive to do that. I want to, I want to see it succeed because it's like, I, obviously Rob started Sentinels and, that was that was his thing but i did get really into it in the first year of early access and now i'm i've got my hands all in it you know basically he will he made all of these tools so that i can easily tune levels in unity so basically he'll put out uh for example lightning strike that's one of the new encounters we just put in so he'll just put in a broken as hell encounter in uh, the developer mode and then i'll go in i'll play it take notes of all the things that need to be changed go in use all the buttons and then just adjust each wave so each wave can be like super fine-tuned so he can focus on the coding part and i can focus on the like the polish and the making it fun part and that has saved him a lot of time and let him work on new features and grappling and melee attacks and punching things it's really cool (laughs) it's pretty awesome that you're that you're able to do that kind of quality control for him Mm -hmm. yeah 
<laughs> I'm really impressed that you guys are, you know, because you're just a two man team. Yeah. I'm really impressed that you guys are willing to take on basically two projects at once. Yeah, we're insane. Yeah, because you guys, I mean, <laughs> I mean, to be working on Onslaught VR and then still going back and, and providing regular updates and corrections for Sentinels as well. You know, most most developers that are, are small, that are two or three or four people are just focused on getting one game out the door. I gave you guys kudos for tackling two, not only two, but uh, I imagine the rules for VR development must be significantly different. It is very true. I mean, the the whole reason it started actually is because Rob's brother was very nice and lent um, his VR equipment to us. We just figured, well, let's try it because we just basically did a port of Sentinels over. We just tried it out like, wait a second, this is fun. Hold on, this is awesome. (laughs) So once we realized that there was potential there, Onslaught is very much sentinels remastered for vr Mm -hmm. Um, we're sharing what we can but we want to make it as fun of an experience in vr as possible you know we're not building a new vr project from the ground up and that has made our lives a lot easier but at the same time onslaught is very much its own game and with the new melee and grappling this is this is the first big break from sentinels that onslaught has had because before like with the strike forces the games complement each other really well when we introduce something in Onslaught, we just stick it in Sentinels and see how it goes. Like, wait a second, this works. And we do it vice versa. With the grappling in the melee, I know that won't work out well for the regular game just because punching things with a mouse doesn't feel as good as with a VR <laughs> controller in your hand. <laughs> so this will be the first, like I said, this will be the first break where Onslaught will kind of start to forge its own path. And it's going to be a challenge, but eh, we've come this far. Awesome. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's something that excites me because, you know, VR is, VR is hard to explain to people unless they've just done it. You know, it's, it's a hard, and I know Matt and I have this debate all the time because he's not, he's not fully sold on it, but I just yeah. can't not see it being a, a new medium that sticks around for gaming because it's just fantastic. And it's hard to explain until you've spent some time in it, just how cool it really feels to be able to, to um, do things, whether it's punch things, fly things throw things there's just a different element to it i can't believe how immersive it is have you played the game uh plank not included no i haven't oh my goodness so you stand on a plank and then you you have to provide the plank hence the name and so we just had it there was just a wooden plank in the garage so i went and grabbed it and uh then in the game you have to catch a hummingbird and it's it looks like you're standing on the plank and there is a thing of lava beneath you my brain was sure I was about to die. I mean, <laughs> VR is so immersive. And the plank I got was a little small. Like, I, I really should have gotten a bigger one. So it was very difficult to balance. And at one point, I fell off. And I actually had that sensation of falling. Like, I'm going to die now. It is mm. that immersive. And I read reviews. I'm not just crazy. Other That's, that's a common response, which is why the game was made. <laughs> but... I just, I can't wait to take advantage of all this stuff, you know, be it with Onslaught or with another project after Onslaught. It's like, VR is amazing. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And it, it's, one day I'll convince Matt of that too. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's just got something special and, and uh, I hope it does stick around because I know the sales for it aren't as strong as people would hope, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I think it's just once they get the equipment a little less cumbersome, yes, then it's going to start rolling. I know with the Oculus Go, it's at least progress although i heard it's got a lot of problems but i would see in a couple of years it'll be way more mainstream oh, yeah i would agree no, that, i mean that makes sense I, I think i think as the technology progresses i feel like that's what's going to help it ultimately right i mean i feel like once it's it's a little bit more streamlined a little bit less clunky per se then i feel like people will, yeah really get into it but it's funny that you're talking about that plank not included there's something similar to that. When I was in uh, London, there was, um, oh God, I forget what the building was called. We were on top of this, like like the highest skyscraper in London. And uh, they had like a little VR set up up there. I, I watched this guy play it and it's like, you're, it, you, you see the view that you're, that you're like uh, looking at right then. And then the, ho- the whole building kind of falls away from you and you're just on this like one steel beam, like, Oof. you know, a hundred stories <laughs> in the air. And it's the same kind of thing. You just have to like walk that little beam and there's like this little bird or whatever on the end that you have to like grab or whatever. It was just, it was, it was very interesting just to watch him and all his friends were watching him too. Like, just like really like waver and like worry about like falling, you know, it's a hundred stories or more to his death. <laughs> so have you played VR? Like, have you, have you actually played some VR games? When PlayStation was doing their like trial and like best buys. I had gone for that. 
but it did, it did. I got a little too motion sickness for me, and it was a little. I never went back to it. That, and I don't have anybody in Chicago here that I know that has it. Because mm. um, Rob and I are in two different places. If I go visit Rob, I'll certainly play it. But yeah, I just never because of that. I just didn't think. I was like, well, do I really want to spend two, three hundred dollars on something that is going to make me? physically ill. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you just had a bad experience, man. Yeah. VR is amazing. Well, yeah, no, I mean, some of the stuff is like really cool. Like, you know, like the, there was like the PSVR worlds or whatever, where you're like in that shark tank thing that you're like, mm-hmm. you're like drop you in the water. And that was kind of cool, <laughs> you know? And, and for that kind of thing, it was like really nifty, but like to play the games was a little bit disjointing for me. You know what I mean? It just didn't like, I mean, it made sense in my brain, but at the same time, I was just like, ah, maybe I shouldn't do this. Cause I'm like, feeling queasy <laughs> yeah I, I can get that we just gotta get you some good vr games man that's all yeah that's what that's all it is i'm, I'm recruiting recruiting alexandria here to get you on the vr train yep. right well i mean i do I'm, i've been i was i've been looking at the uh, onslaught like video that you guys have on steam and it it looks really cool like i mean i feel like it looks like a really cool kind of experience that you guys have we're we're trying and it doesn't seem like too disjointing we really try to make the movement smooth uh you might find it a little fast for your first time (laughs) yeah right (laughs) but you get used to it really fast i mean when i first played it it was it was a direct port and that was with the original speed and okay yeah i i felt like i was gonna that was bad it was way too fast (laughs) and like the world was spinning and i had to take off the headset i'm like okay i'm i'm solid we're good we're good but we we cut the speed like in half and that made all the difference yeah well, it's good that you guys adjusted. It makes, you know, I'm sure it makes the people happier as far as like, you know, being able to like, you know, play it properly. And and that's one thing we really pride ourselves in is just quick response time. Like I am glued to my phone. I just, I, it is, it is with me at all points in time. This last week has been one of the few exceptions. Cause I was going to say, we, we could probably talk a little bit about that if you wanted. Uh, oh. you just to remind people that you are you are developers, you are human though. I am human and I'm sorry for like the next to no updates for the last two weeks. Cause yeah, it's been crazy. First my <laughs> my friend had a sick cat who has kidney disease. They were leaving for a business trip. They were terrified to leave her, so I had to go take care of her. Super sweet cat. I God, I'm I'm glad that I she's no longer my responsibility, but she's doing really well. <laughs> But she just had to take a bunch of pills and giving a cat pills. Well, anyone who has cats, you know how that is. So it's just been, that was interesting. And then I, I, I left, I was getting home. I'm super excited to work and someone ran a red light and hit me and my car got smashed in and that wasn't fun at all. Um, (laughs) so (laughs) that has been an entire debacle that I needed to take care of. And yeah. happy ending. The insurance is covering everything because she admitted fault because, well, she yeah, ran the red light and I was just on my way to get burgers, actually. And so yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, it just took a long time to get that sorted out. In addition, the shifts at, um, at my job, somebody quit and they were short on laser technicians. So I had to train to be a laser technician. So now I'm working three 10 hour days there. And I'm working two other days at my retail job. So that leaves only two days for game development. And I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that is Sounds probably like the easiest summary of my life right now is I am tired. Yeah. But um, somebody actually said something really cute on my Twitter. I, I wish I remembered their handle because I would shout them out. They I swear they made my day. But one thing that the accident made me realize, because my car took it like a champ. I'm okay <laughs> aside from some whiplash, like... And my arm still kind of hurts. It got jammed against the steering wheel. But other than that, I'm fine. But my priorities were like, as soon as I made sure I was okay and she was okay, I was thinking, oh, shoot, how am I going to finish the promo I need to do tonight? Like, literally, that was my focus. (laughs) And it made me realize that if if game development is that high on my passion list where, like, I get out of my broken car and think, well, I need to rearrange some things in my schedule, then... (laughs) I just don't want to sweat the small stuff. And they just said something um, really cute. They're like, well, if two, if two tons of steel can't stop you, what, what will? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I, I like that yeah. mentality. So the car accident sucked, but it did give me a nice perspective that clearly this is my passion and I'm going to make it work. I, you know, sure, I am working a lot at other jobs, but that's fine. The, the best part is that my, my bosses are so nice and... I work really hard at the jobs there too, but it's like, if I get a message that I need to respond to, I just tell them and then they just let me. So I, I'm still really quick on responding to anyone that needs help. 
still really quick on reviews, feedback, and I will funnel it immediately to Rob to take care of, or if I can take care of it, I will. So it's like, I'm not going to let anything get in the way of the one thing that I have. That is, I want to be a community developer. I really want to develop with the people who play the game. And I think that's awesome yeah. because, um, and I, I know you, I know you're very quick about things because even when your phone busted, you were still, it's still busted. You were still, <laughs> you were still tweeting out about fixing your phone. I was like, how is she, is she just, you know, making sure she put up a, a, a desktop or a laptop to make sure she's still tweeting out? I was, and... I was tweeting that on my broke ass phone, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually just peeled away enough the glass where um, I can, <laughs> I'm too scared to fix it. I don't know if you guys looked up uh, Galaxy S6 fixes. It's a nightmare. No, I haven't. But I know an iPhone's a nightmare to fix because I've tried that myself. It's like, just like that. Basically, the screen will crack like an egg if you poke Ugh. it or breathe on it wrong. So I didn't mess with that. My screen is, my screen is sad, but I, I fixed the rest of it. So now I can hear out of it. Okay. And glass isn't stabbing my face. So my phone is <laughs> functional and that's what I'm going to go with until this game picks up and I can buy a new phone. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, very important that, that the glass isn't stabbing your face yes. while you're trying to talk to people about minor that. inconvenience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh, man. Uh, you know, I, it's it's great to hear that you are so involved with the community, too. And I, I know, I don't know if you've been following the Jessica Price situation at all. I did look into it, and oh, my God. Yeah, she's she's gotten herself in a little bit of a mess there, I think, um, with that. But, you know, I think that, I do think they've been treating her a little unfair, but that's all I'm really going to say, in, in my opinion, regarding that. You know, it's it's great to, I, I know that gamers really, let's, let's be honest, as a whole, they can be a fickle bunch. But I think that one thing that they really appreciate is being able to have developers that they can interact with or n know that they're being heard or listened to. And that, you know, that when you're playing a game and, and there's something going on with it, that, you know, that bug is going to get fixed or patched. Yeah, that is that is our guarantee. And with the with the with that situation, uh, there's always going to be trolls online. Mm -hmm. And even though I say that we listen to everyone, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to bend to your will. We're, yeah. we're going to take everything into account. And if it's a bug, we'll, we'll fix that ASAP. But it's not it's not a guarantee that everything you say will automatically be put into the game or that everything you say is is gold. It's just we value your opinion because you're playing and we want to make it fun for you. But yeah. we're not going to we're not going to fold to community pressure if we honestly think that it is a bad direction for the game. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where people have to put their faith a little bit in, in the people who create this stuff. Exactly. I mean, it's just like, we, we do know what we're doing, but we're just two people and we've been staring at this game every day for like years. So obviously <laughs> it's a can't see forest for trees thing where yeah. I can't play it like a newbie. Whenever I'm testing rookie, I'll just empty my clip randomly because it's like, I don't know how else to not play this game right. I'll just put myself at a disadvantage and pretend that, okay, I'm a newbie now. I have no ammo. It's just, it's, so that's the kind of thing I love the new, like the different perspectives. That's what I love. It's just like people see it in such different ways and I'm like, thank you. I never would have seen that for myself. I'm going to go take that into account for the silly thing that I just did, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what do you guys see as the future for both of these? Because you mentioned that they're in early access and, and obviously you're not sure when that'll get out, but what's your kind of final vision for these or where do you think you guys want to wind up with, with both games? Well, we have lofty visions that I hope will come to fruition. Um, right now our priorities did change a little just because finances are very tight. We do think that Onslaught VR has a greater chance of being more immediately financially su successful. So we're focusing on that for now because Sentinels is in a very good place. It feels good to play and it's a good solid game, which for a while it wasn't, hence early access. But right now I feel very confident to say, hey, if you buy this game, you're going to have fun. And of course, we're going to be on top of any bug fixes. But going with the assumption, yes, it's an assumption, but fingers are very crossed, that Onslaught VR has a good um, early access release. What we want to do is go back to Sentinels and have a Sentinels VR add-on that will basically be, because right now Onslaught's kind of its own standalone, right? Mm -hmm. But we want to add, oh, we have so many plans. Like we want to add new towers. Uh, we want to really bring in that tower defense, graphics feel, like lightning towers, poison towers, fire towers, things like that. So beef that up 
and make it a really graphically pleasing game in that respect and then port that over into a straight to VR Sentinels where you can bring all of your equipment from the PC game to the VR game and interchangeable. So you can get loot in the VR game that will unlock in Sentinels and vice versa. So it would be a shared game save and you would get to keep your equipment. So that's something that we would really like to do. So Onslaught's probably going to be its own little arcade experience with grappling and punching and all the stuff that I said. And we want to get that one just out and fun and hopefully lucrative. And then we're going to go to Sentinels and just polish it up and make it the amazing game that I know we can make it. And then we're going to hopefully release it in a year or two. And then after that, who knows? I mean, we have so many ideas. Like, you know, we'll often just kind of talk and brainstorm and discuss so many different fun game ideas that we want to pursue. So... This definitely won't be the last two games you see from us. Not even awesome. close. That's awesome. But well, I know you caught Rob's attention with the uh, cross save kind of thing. He's really into that. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate when my games um, interact in some way. You know, they don't have to, but like that's a nice little nod when you can take something and go, oh, you know what? You've earned this here. Why don't you use this here? And, and vice versa. And so that's kind of a cool um, bonus that I enjoy when, when a game does that or is able to do that. And it's not an expectation, but something that I think is really another great idea that you guys have, it sounds like, uh, to develop both products and have them kind of interact in that way. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it because I like the idea of somebody unlocking a shotgun in a PC game then jumping in VR and then experiencing the shotgun in VR. Because, oh my God, the, the just spoiler alert, the shotgun in VR right now is OP as hell. And I love it. It takes everything <laughs> down and it feels so good. So yeah, it's like, you, it's fun in the regular game. But then I like the idea of, ooh, this was really fun. I'm just going to try it. Oh my God. And then just shoot everything. It's just, I, that, that's my dream, guys. <laughs> awesome. awesome. My one question, I guess, and then this is pardon my naivete with this, but uh, what I guess what's the difference between like Steam and early access and Kickstarter? Is there a difference, or those are just different routes that developers choose? Yes and no. Uh, we actually thought really hard about doing a Kickstarter, but then decided in early access because we wanted feedback to be our priority. Basically, with early access, it's letting people buy it at a reduced price um, with the quote-unquote risk that the game may or may not change further. Like Steam has sure. changed a lot of things, and it's kind of unfortunate because now that there's so many games that are changing so many things because apparently there's like a bunch of asset flipping games that are just killing the market. So it's mm -hmm. so hard yeah. to get noticed these days. Yeah. Um, but with Kickstarter, it's a promise that we'll give them a game at some point. We wouldn't, we would send out demos, but we would also have to have merchandise and stretch goals and all of these things. And it was just a lot of development that wasn't towards actually making the game better. So it probably would have been a better way to get a lump sum of money to to sit on and develop the game. But we chose early access because we wanted to get that steady feedback as we improved it. Because Kickstarter wouldn't have been a release. We wouldn't have had any place for people to get it other than sending them demos. Right. Okay. We, we thought about it and I, I like how things are turning out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like you're doing a jo good job with that decision if you're, as, if you're pushing it, you know, once that decision is made to go behind it full, uh, wholeheartedly and, you know, make the best of it. Exactly. Because the Kickstarter campaign would have taken probably months to flesh out, and that would have been months that wasn't game development time. So right. Yeah. And, of course, the, involving the community and, you know, giving them a voice as to how, you know, things are going wrong or, you know, things need to be improved is, I'm sure, you know, a plus for them as far as wanting to buy the game. I hope so. Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, it's... And yeah, I think that's a you know that's a great way to look at early access versus Kickstarter because Kickstarter um, is great to get that lump sum as you said, but um, you are you know I mean I know there's a few Kickstarters I've backed, but now I'm now I'm I'm eagerly waiting, and I know I won't hear anything for like a year on some of them. Exactly. Um, right. Whereas with early access, at least I get you get that taste of it, and you get to go well, you know this is this what works, this is what doesn't work, and, and like uh, we've pointed out multiple times that interaction with the community is so important. Uh, in that regard, because it lets you know you're on the right track and what needs to be changed. You got it very succinctly. That is exactly why. Uh, so, Alexander, just to kind of wrap things up here. Mm -hmm. um, what I, I think we'd like to maybe just talk about is um, someone's listening to this and, and they're going, okay, Sentinel sounds interesting. Onslaught sounds interesting. Um, I know it's early access. 
Uh, maybe I'll just wait a little bit longer. Why should they jump in now to go ahead and, and put their money behind it now for the product and, and uh, rather than wait for something more, you know, more polished or down the road? So many things. So number one, you're going to have so much more opportunity for feedback now than when it's released, because when it's released, most likely we're not going to be changing the core of it. But if that doesn't, is that not enough to sell you on it? We are going to be adding in very soon. Um, early access only perks. And we are going to be adding in a ton of these before we release, like guaranteed. And one of them will most likely be a set um, EXP increase. So you will always get experience faster. We're going to add gun reskins. I would like to do, and uh, Rob said he wanted to do this as well, just unique voice lines that you'll unlock. And my personal favorite, this is, this is silly, but I like it. Um, we're going to add graphics that early access only backers will get. So like uh, instead of explosions, you can have confetti or balloons or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, guys. Uh, Come no, that's, it. no, no, that, no. I'm laughing because that that sounds amazing. Yeah, that that would sell me on it right there. <laughs> I just I love the idea of just just you shoot something confetti. So <laughs> so you won't get them immediately, but you will almost assuredly get them before the end of the year and. I can I can promise you that you will get cool EA only stuff, and that you will <laughs> never get another chance for once we release into the regular game. Plus, it's going to be a lot cheaper now too. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Perfect, awesome. Well, Alexandria, thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. Hopefully, yeah. I didn't blather too much. But no, this, not at this all. This is great. Oh, not at all. I mean, just like all the rest of the developers that we've spoken with, we'll we'll definitely have you back at some point, uh, maybe later in the year, even when. Uh, you know, or when you decide it's going to be moving into a new direction or out of early access, you're always welcome back, you and Rob. Yeah, he, he does apologize that he couldn't make it. He had something come up, but he would be more than happy to be on the show at a later date whenever you guys would like. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The only thing he ruined today was I was hoping to say we had the entire studio of Mindwalker Games. <laughs> I wanted to really step it up and <laughs> sell that we had the entire studio. Makes it sound so amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sounds impressive. Yeah, it does. Your name is Rob. That's close enough. We have yeah, A-Rob yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, just, we'll, we'll have Dave alter my voice a little bit, and I'll record yeah. some lines like he's Perfect. here. Perfect. Just say hi. I'm Rob. It's not a lie. <laughs> yes, this is this has been great, and uh, I am definitely looking forward to talking with you guys again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, likewise. So, just to kind of wrap things up here, guys. Uh, again, this is Alexandria Misha from Mindwalker Games. Uh, go check out Sentinels and Onslaught VR. They're both in early access, but you'll have opportunities to get really cool things if you back them now. Uh, like confetti explosions, which <laughs> who doesn't want hey, that? Hey, Rob, where, where are they in early access? They are in early access on Steam. Oh, Steam. You can go to our website at mindwalkergames.com and you can find the links there. Perfect. And Ooh. and you want to give us your uh, Twitter as well while you're here? Sure. Uh, official Twitter is Mindwalker Games, So you can follow that for all of the official stuff. And I have my personal Twitter, Owl Gray T, And that's where I post the less <laughs> official stuff and cute dogs and whatever nonsense I ran into that day. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And mindwalkergames.com again is the website. It's it's pretty bare bones, but it gives you all the information you need to know. Yeah, it gives you it gives you um, I've stopped there several times. It definitely gives you enough, you know, what exactly what you need to know to uh, enjoy both games and and to uh, show these guys some love. And so, once again, Alexandria, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. This has been our indie industry uh, interview. And uh, until next time, guys, game on. Game on. Right. Whoops. This is the outro music. Outro music for Blended this in with the week. intro. <laughs> good stuff. Oh, man. Good times. <laughs>